Good evening, Facebook family. Pastor James coming to you live right now. Uh, praise ye the Lord. Thank God for this Wednesday evening. Hallelujah. Yes, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for you tonight. Let's give God glory and honor. Give him praise. Esteem him high. He is an awesome God and a wonderful God, a loving and a kind God. I just want to thank him and praise him. I just want to love him and lift him up today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening to you, my brother and sister that's watching right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Yes, there is no one like our God. He is an awesome God. He is a wonderful God. He is a kind. He is a just God. And I just thank him and praise him for this opportunity that we have to come together today and break bread over Bible study. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead on. The ladies will join me in a minute. Uh, I'm going to go ahead on and just pray uh, so that we can move forward. Hallelujah. And do what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank him and praise him. All right, let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We lift you up. Come tonight to give you all glory, all honor to esteem you high, for you are truly an awesome God and a wonderful God, a loving, a kind, and a just God, and there is no other God like you in all this earth. Father God, we thank you for your loving grace that keeps us and covers us. And Father, right now, I pray that every eye will be open to see what the word of God will show us tonight. Every ear is anointed to hear what the word of God will speak to us tonight. Every heart is open hallelujah, and ready to receive a seed of the word. That seed will be planted. That seed will die and produce roots that produce tree, that produce fruit and harvest that will last from one generation to the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if you have your Bibles, your swords, your shield, lift them up and say this after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I declare my Bible is the living word of the living God. It has the power and the authority to change my life. And I declare after hearing the word, my life will be changed for the better in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, hey, until one of the ladies shows up, I'm just going to slide in the middle. Hallelujah. I'm just going to slide in the middle. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, listen, we know um, this is a, the song said the most wonderful time of the year. And this is the time to where, you know, we get to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But sometimes it sort of feels like the true meaning of Christmas is slowly dying. It's fading away. You know. So I want us to look into tonight. The story. Of Jesus. His birth. And I want us to really think about. Why do we. As Christians. Celebrate. The birth of Jesus. Some of the things that we do. Um were not present at his birth when he was born. And we're going to go through that. We're going to show you uh, with this Bible study over this tonight and next week uh, as we move towards Christmas. Now, understand, I'm not knocking Christmas. I'm not knocking gifts given because as a Christian, the Bible tells us to give. It instructs us to give. So we give because it's a part of being a Christian. But we just don't wait for one time of the year to give. We give throughout the year. You know, time, money, uh, talents, whatever we have. We give. We give love. We show love to other people. So tonight we're going to look. And if you have your Bibles with you, let's go over to Luke. The second chapter. The book of Luke. The second chapter. And we're going to look into... Um, this story is familiar and I say it's, a, it's familiar because I know it's been taught, especially if you've been in the church, you don't heard the story um, in December. But I want us to look through the scriptures and let's 
actually go through and let's see what happened at Jesus birth. Let's witness who saw him at Jesus birth. Cause some things that we do and that we set up for Christmas, it looks good, but it's not right. And, and I want to come to that and I'm not attacking the looks. I just want you as a Christian to have proper knowledge of Christmas and what happened when Jesus was born, what happened at his birth. So I want you, my brothers and sisters, to be aware of what truly happened. And when we look at a display, to have a proper understanding. Here go Pastor Sabrina, so let me move. Hallelujah. All right, Pastor Angela, I'm not going to make it tonight. Y'all keep her uh, in your prayers. Uh, she was involved in a car accident yesterday. So y'all keep her lifted up in prayer. Hallelujah. She's all right. She's got a little pain, but just pray for her. If you ever been in a car accident and they don't hit you hard, you, you know you get that pain that starts in the neck and radiate down, you feel it. So. Well, good evening, everyone. Sorry for my tardiness. Hallelujah. It was an emergency. Hallelujah. So uh, let's go down and we're going to start Luke 2, verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1. And let's just go through it. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Now they had to return. Joseph and Mary had to go back to Joseph's city where he was a citizen, where he was born, they had to go back there to be taxed, to pay homage, to pay what they owe. And it goes on to say, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. So we see here, this is how uh, Jesus was born into the lineage of David because of his father, who was born in the lineage of David, of the house of David in Judea in a place called Bethlehem. So see, that's why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So it goes on to say, to be taxed, this verse five, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now Mary was pregnant. She was ready, about ready to give birth. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. It was time. It's time. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Notice what it says. Her firstborn son. Not her only son. Her firstborn son. Which meant there was other sons after Jesus to come. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no, no room for them in the inn. So they went to the hotel. The hotel didn't have no rooms. Because of this taxing, everything was taken up. Mm -hmm. And it had to be fulfilled of where Jesus would be born. So he was born in a manger. He was born like in a barn. In a place to where they kept animals. So it's like every everyone who was from Belglade had to report back to Belglade. Back to Belglade, or everyone from West Palm Beach or Pahokee or yep. Fort Lauderdale or Miami had to report back there, no matter where you are. No matter where you are in the, the country, world, you had to go back. Because you notice it says all the world. Mm -hmm. That means no matter where you were in the world, you had to go back to your roots to be taxed. The world. All the world. You had to go back to your roots. Now, let's come on. So here it is. We see now, they done went back to Bethlehem. The Holiday Inn, the Embassy Suites, uh, the, 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 the Hyatt, the Hilton, the Marriott, the Weston. <laughs> the Motel 8. Motel 8, six, Motel 6. Eight. Bob <laughs> leaving the light on for you. Every room, the inn was booked. Everywhere was filled. No matter what, it was booked. It'd be the equivalent of us going someplace and boom, you got to sleep in your car because you ain't got no, they, there's no room nowhere. 
So they go, she have Jesus. She wrap him in swaddling clothes. She just wrapped him up. And that's where he was in a manger around animals. So we see that part. We see where our Savior was born. We see where he was when he was born. We see what kind of clothing. He, he didn't have no onesie. Not what you, where you think a king would be born. No, nah, he wasn't born in no palace. That's for sure. None of that. You know. Now let's go down to verse 8. It says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Now we see this. These shepherds are minding their own business. And all of a sudden, angels of the Lord, an angel came down to them and shined round. He was so bright and beautiful, just shining. And they were scared. They probably had never, ever seen anything like this. And now all of a sudden, they find themselves in a field, tending to their flocks, watching over their flock. And all of a sudden, this angel just appears before their presence. And they scared. That's what it means. They're so afraid. They're scared. And the angel says, verse 10, and the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So the angel has telling them, Pastor Sabrina, Pastor Adam, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, listen, don't be scared. I'm bringing you some good news, something that you can be joyous about, something that you can cheer about, you can dance to, you can clap your hands to. He said, I'm bringing you good news. He said, it's bringing great, that will bring great joy to all people. So the news they have is not just for them, but it's for all people. It's for everybody. It's for everybody who's there. Every Jew, Gentile, whoever. Everybody it's for everybody. everybody. Everywhere, this good news is coming. And look at what he says in verse number 11. He said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now we see here, the angel of the Lord is giving them evidence of who has just been born. He's telling them, who has been born in Bethlehem because we know Bethlehem is called what? The city of David. And he's telling him, he's telling them a savior. He's telling them salvation, wholeness, completeness, healing, deliverer. He is born. Christ, our Lord. That's who was born. And look at what else he goes to say in verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. My brothers and sisters, this is where we uh, education comes into play. Because when you see this, the angel is not talking to the three kings. He's not talking to the three kings. The nativity scene that is displayed, it is beautiful. You got Mary, you got Joseph, you got baby Jesus in the manger, you got animals all around, but you have three kings. And that is not correct. Because we just saw who the angel of the Lord spoke to on the day that Jesus was born. And like I said, I'm not knocking that. I just want to make sure we understand as Christians what happened on this glorious day that we have picked to celebrate Christ's birth. Anything you want to ask, Pastor Brennan? No, I was just going to say it's probably 
shown that way with the three kings because um someone in the world decided that will sell that will sell more items better than some shepherd somebody that's out there with the stinky sheep so that's what i'm saying we want to make sure that we are not that being destroyed for lack of knowledge mm -hmm. that we understand um what we're celebrating we know why we're celebrating. We know why we're celebrating the, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Christ. Jesus Christ. But we need to make sure we understand that we have things in a proper perspective because there are other people who read our Bible, who know this story, and they laugh at us as Christians because they say, the mm -hmm, y'all don't even know your own Bible. And we don't want that to happen. We want us to. We want to have this. In well, the, even when the wise men um, showed up, the Bible doesn't say it was three of them. Mm -mm, nope, it's just gifts. It just came there in gifts. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the world, the picture shows three because of the three the gifts that were given. Yes. It was three types of gifts. Three given. types of gifts that was given, and then it says in verse thirteen. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth and goodwill toward men. Y'all know that song we sing, glory to God in the highest. That's where this song come from. Okay. And it says in verse 15, and it came to pass as the angel were gone away from them into the heavens. The shepherd said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now you see on the day Jesus was born, the shepherds have been enlightened by the angels. Mm -hmm. Now there's a host, a heavenly host singing and praising to get glory to God because of the birth of Jesus Christ. See, this is a time of the year that we should be rejoicing more than ever. Amen. No, I know people say, well, Jesus wasn't even born on December the 25th. I wasn't there. Pastor Brina wasn't there. You wasn't there. But this has been the day that we have chosen to celebrate the birth Amen. of our Savior. Exactly. I don't care if he was we born know, on the, the exact Yeah, we don't know the exact day. It does. I don't care. But the thing of it is, is we just need to we celebrate his birth because he is our he is our savior. He was born to take away the sins of the world so that we can have a new life so that when God see us, he see us through the blood so that we can accept him as our Lord and savior and have a right to eternal life in heaven and not in hell. Amen. So then it goes on to say. And they came with haste. Now they running. They said they came with haste. They didn't waste no time. Here it is. These shepherds were supposed to be watching the sheep, but they done left the sheep behind and then went to see what the angels was talking about. That's a beautiful thing. So they were from, from around there. So yes. that's why they went running um, to where they knew the manger was. That's why they went running to the manger. To see. Amen. Yep. They had to go see. And then it says. And found Mary. And Joseph. And the babe lying in a manger. So now. What do we have? Who's in the manger? We got Mary. Joseph. Baby Jesus. And the shepherds. We know it's more than one shepherd. We don't know how many shepherds, but it's more than one. This is the true nativity scene. That you got Joseph, Mary, baby Jesus, and the shepherds that was watching the sheep. So this is what we want you to be able to see, the correct story. And it says in verse 17, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard it with wondered at those things which was told them by the shepherds. 
But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now you see this? The shepherds don't came, they don't told what was told to them. Exactly what was told to them by the angel of the Lord. And everything that the angel told them, they saw it with their own eyes. They saw it with their own eyes. And if you keep reading the story, you'll see that after so much time, Jesus was presented in the temple and the kings didn't see Jesus at this point. They still did not see Jesus. So we want to celebrate Christmas. But make, I just like I said, I want us to have a true understanding and a true picture of, of what happened when Jesus was born. You want to ask something, Pastor Brina? No, I was just saying it's just we, you're given a true depiction of an account based on the um, inspired word of God in the Bible of what was like, what was there, what happened, who came to see the baby. Exactly. And how they went out and told everybody about the birth of Christ. Yeah, because I can remember when I was a little boy, and I know I, I said it before. Oh, gosh, this story again. Yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up every Christmas. Because <laughs> I played Joseph. You know, and and the three kings brought gifts. I didn't know. I was a little kid. Well, you just went by what you were told. Exactly. And this is why it's so important for us to make sure we're teaching our children right, the next generation correctly. Because we don't want them going around thinking that something happened when it's right here in the Bible. And then they end up seeing it for themselves and saying, man, all the time the mom and daddy took me to church, they ain't never tell me that it wasn't no wise men who saw Jesus in the manger. So we gotta make sure we're teaching everything correctly. Even even when it comes down, and this right here gonna be hard for some parents, even Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Because when I grew up, there was not one apartment or one house or one trailer in my neighborhood that had a chimney. Did your mom tell you it was a Santa Claus? No, I knew that they bought that stuff. Even as two, three, four, five years old? No, I ain't know they that. They never told you it was mm -mm. a Santa Claus. No, nah, matter of fact, they did tell me. They said, hey, you better go to bed because Santa Claus ain't going to bring you nothing. I wanted to see Santa come through the door. Because we ain't had no milk and cookies out by no tree for Santa Claus. We ain't had none of that stuff. Santa didn't get that big 60. Nah, he who? I wish he would. But me and Santa Claus probably would got into a fight by them big 60 cookies back then. But I'm just saying is that we, we need to be truthful. Yes, some things sound good and they look good. It's a fun act. A yeah, fun it is. activity for children. Like we allowed our our children, they knew um, the story on. of Santa Claus. Like they knew the story, and um, they've been read the Christmas story. But we've always we've ne we've always told them Santa Claus is a fictional character, just like Barney and Big Bird and Batman and Superman. It's a fictional character that the world created, and mm -hmm. it didn't seem to. It didn't dissuade them from Christmas at all. We told them that we celebrate um, the birth of Christ at, at Christmas. So we've always read with them from the Bible, the birth of Christ, what we're reading tonight from the book of Luke and let them know when we celebrated Jesus. And yes, they got toys and we put up the Christmas tree and we did all of that, but they knew. So they didn't have any high expectation, expectation for a whole lot of gifts because they know I would, we asked them on your birthday, would you like everyone else to um, get a whole lot of stuff? And then no one even calls your name or says anything to you. And they said, no. So we will always get up and give God praise and pray and talk to Jesus. And uh, sometimes we'll get cupcakes or a cake uh, for Jesus because one of the kids wanted to blow, wanted to get Jesus a birthday cake or, or cupcakes to blow out a candle. But we just always explain to them the true meaning of what Christmas is. And, you know, and that's the good thing about it is that, you know, hey, give your kids gifts, but make sure that you give them the gift of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Telling That's them good. the real meaning behind Christmas mm -hmm. and like why we're celebrating Christmas. 
that is not just getting gifts, but we're celebrating the gift that God gave to us, which is his son. I would even say as an adult, you have to be mindful not to get caught up in the holiday and just remember who Jesus is and why um, the purpose for celebrating that day. Because as adults, you can get caught up too and get upset with people because you didn't get something that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's for any of, of the holidays, Valentine's Day, birthdays, all of that, because we're supposed to love and give all the time. All the time, every single and it doesn't, day. It's not always something we purchase from the store. And plus, too, you know, even with even with the thing about Santa Claus, Santa Claus came from this guy um, called Nick. His name was Nick. They called him Saint Nick because he would always leave gifts good. for kids mm -hmm. outside of the doors. You know, the good. kids put a put their shoe outside, and he would always outside. every year. And go around and he will put a gift in their shoe or the sock, whatever they left outside. He will leave a gift for them. And this is where the whole thing with Santa Claus came into play, you know, because of, I don't know if he's a saint, but he's called Saint they Nick. They call him Saint Nick. I yeah, mean, in the he, Catholic Church, he's called he did, Saint Nick. Because he did, did good. Yep, yep. So they called him Saint Nick. So and then that is Saint Nick evolved into Santa Claus, you know. Well, the world ran with it because they can make money. Oh, yeah. What store can't make money? What business? Every business can make money off Christmas. Amen. Christmas time and all the other holidays. And 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 like I said, I'm not. I don't want us to knock what we're, we're not, doing we're for not, the holiday. We're not Christmas bashing. No, no, we're not. We're we're actually doing Christmas education because Jesus was. Thank you, Pastor. Andrew, he is the Lamb of God. He was sent to be that final sacrifice, mm -hmm. to be the atonement for all of our sins. And we should celebrate Christmas. We should, you know, this should be a time to where, uh, yes, we should be decorating. You know, you put your tree up because we know Jesus hung on a tree for us. Yeah, that we was, decorated. I Go remember ahead. I told you one year, I said that the greatest gift wasn't, isn't under the tree. The greatest gift hung on a tree yep. for us. Amen. But, Christmas celebrates the, the birth of Christ and the gift that God gave us, the gift of his son and Jesus deciding, yes, Father, I go. Because he could at any time call them and he could have said, no, I don't want to go. Amen. I don't know what would have happened, but I guess he had a choice whether he wanted to come to earth or not. And he chose to, to do the will of his father and not his own will. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, let's jump over since we don't got this part um, done. I, I want us to look at the kings now. Where do the kings come into play into all of this? And let's turn over to Matthew, the second chapter. Let's go to Matthew 2. So we see here, this is the birth of Jesus. We see here the shepherds were given the message about Jesus and, you know, him being born and where he was, what how he was dressed. The shepherds are the one who received all that information then they responded with haste and they told everybody and they were telling, saying what had happened. And Mary kept all that in her heart because she knew it had to be had to be God. Couldn't be nobody else but God because the shepherd showed up. So let's look at Matthew, the second chapter. Are you going to let anybody else read? Yeah, go ahead. You can read Or, or you just going to read mm, Go ahead. You can read it. <laughs> what version would you like me to read? Whatever version you got available. Okay. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Matthew 2, starting with verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called the meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they, say, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of, Judea, of, of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Ju Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be thy, the shepherd for my people Israel. 
Then um, verse seven, then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over a place where the child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother. Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they learned they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in the dream not to return to Herod. Okay, now, let's look at what happened. So now we have these wise men. We don't know how many. We know there's more than one because it says wise men. So that's more than one. That's plural. Men is plural. They done came. They met with King Herod. Mm -hmm. They asked King Herod, where is the king of the Jews born? Where is the savior born? that was born in Bethlehem. They, they want to know, where is he at? See, they know his name. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, they know who he is. Now, Herod, he hear this, he get upset. Because he's the king. Because he's the king. He don't want another king above him. No, he don't. And and he's in charge right now. He He's not ready to give up that he's authority. Trained. He's not ready to give up that good life, all mm -hmm. them service. What you mean? I'm quite, he's saying to himself, what I mean, you mean there's another, another king. king? I'm the king. And you know, who's supposed to be king of the Jews? What you mean? I'm the king of the Jews right now. <laughs> no, no, no. So then he called his people and asked them, hey, where is this uh, Savior supposed to be born? You know, where, where, where is the Christ supposed to be born? And so they go on and so they tell him. And then he called one of them back room meeting. Yeah, tell him what the Violate law so don't nobody know. But to find out, I said, look, okay, listen, this is what he is. Y'all go find him. When y'all do, come back and let me know so I can worship him too. So I can go down there and worship him. See, he's speaking, but his heart ain't right. He don't want to worship Jesus. He don't want to give up that kingship. No, that's not in his heart. Well, one thing I want to pay attention to in verse 7, it says, When he called for the private meeting with the wise men, he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Amen. So that means it hasn't just appeared. No. But they knew when the star first appeared, so they have been traveling yep. to get there. They've been traveling. So they've been on a journey. Because they're from, where did it say, east from the east? Yep, they're from the east. They came from east of Jerusalem. Eastern lands. They don't say mm -hmm. that anywhere. They came somewhere east of Jerusalem. So they could have came as far as uh, Africa, you know, the, the eastern part of, of the western part of Africa somewhere to come to Jerusalem because where 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 it is and where Israel and um, where Jerusalem is and all that stuff, it's in the Red Sea. It's on the backside. So they come in east. They got to come from somewhere from another land, from somewhere that's not close to where Jerusalem is because they can't be you know, it didn't take them a little time. It took them a great time to get there with that star. So it goes on, and then he talks about it again. Now, he done met with them. Then he sent them to go look for him. He's, now King Herod has sent the wise man to go look for Jesus. He done sent them to go look for Jesus. Pastor Angelo, stop getting ahead of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they went, they found them, they were happy. But look at verse number 11. Look at what it says in verse number 11. Because see, verse number 11 is very important in this story. What's written in verse number 11 is very important. Look at what it says. I'm going to read it from the King James and say, And when they were coming to the house, hold on. Jesus was born in a what? Manger. He was born in a manger. Where did the wise men 
see Jesus. In a house. In a house. So now they don't transition from a manger. And a baby. And a baby into a house. With a child. With a child. A little child. So you see, the shepherds saw Jesus in the manger as a babe. The wise men saw Jesus in the house as a child. Mm -hmm. And it says, and when and they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. See that? This is where the gifts come in at. This is where the gifts come in from mm -hmm. for giving on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. This is where it comes into the story. Because the wise men, when they saw Jesus, they brought gifts. And they gave unto them valuable gifts. Understand this. What they gave to Jesus was important for their family. Yeah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave them those things to help sustain them because of what was going to happen next. What was going to happen next after they saw Jesus, after they fell down and worshiped him, after they presented unto him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's go on. And it says, and God had warned them in a dream that they should not go back to Herod. They went another way. Start reading that verse number 13 for me, Pastor Sabrina. Okay, my title says, The Escape to Egypt. Yes, after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appealed to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. Based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal, brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard. And Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Mm. Now, look what happens. Wise men depart, flee into Egypt. Herod realized, wait a minute, they haven't came back yet. They trick me. They don't trick me. Now he gives an order, like she passed Sabrina Red. Based on when they say they saw that star until the current time, he's figuring Jesus is no more than two years old. So he orders every male child mm -hmm. around Bethlehem to be killed, executed, because he's trying to kill the Savior. But God had already told Joseph, listen, get your family, pack everything up. Go down to Egypt you until I tell you to come back. Joseph didn't ask any questions. No. Nah. He obeyed. He yep. listened and he obeyed. Mary just did what her husband told her to do. Amen. And she and, and, and they fled. They left. They heeded the voice of God that came to Joseph in a dream. Mm -hmm. So we see here, Jesus is more than a babe in a manger. Jesus is a little toddler. He's a little child, probably walking, running around, getting into things like little boys love to do. And some scholars say he's between 18 months and two years old. So based on Harris' account and what we can see, he's killing every male child under the age of two. And as a parent, what could Imagine you do? The soldier says, Grabbing them off the streets, coming into your homes. And just killing them. Just 
Taking their sword to them. Just kill them, probably <coughs> cutting their heads off or whatever. And there's nothing you could do because Herod is trying to kill the Savior, but don't realize the Savior is not there. So now you're understanding, and, and, and I hope you have an understanding of the real story behind Christ's birth and what happened and when and who saw Jesus win. Who saw him at birth, what we're celebrating now, which is called Christmas, the time of the year that we're celebrating Christ, our Lord and Savior, understanding the gifts were given to help sustain Mary, Joseph, and Jesus while they fled yeah, out they of- Yeah, they couldn't work. They couldn't yeah, get a job. They couldn't do Very nothing. They hiding. Yep. So they went down to Egypt and they went into Egypt and what? They got money. They got valuable ointments and stuff like that. Frankincense and myrrh, it was very valuable. Something they could sell to help sustain them. Exchange. Yes, they could exchange it for more. So, boom, so they went down and they left. They left. So, the wise men saw Jesus in the house. The shepherds saw Jesus in the manger. So, when we look at it, we can set this scene up to say on Christmas Day, on the day that Christ was born, our nativity scene should reflect Christ in the manger along with his mother and father and the shepherds and some animals. Then if we want to add another depiction of the gift scenes, we can add Mary and a little baby in a house with the wise men coming in giving gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it never stated how many. And no, it never stated. No. The three came from... The three gifts. Yeah, it came from the three gifts. That's why we have a depiction of three wise men. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. It could have been ten. They could have been, been loaded down. Army. Yeah, because they don't gave them gold, frankincense, and myrrh. To and, sustain them for years. Yeah, to sustain them. And it's so evidently, it, it, it sustained them until... In the next part, it talks about when they returned from Egypt back to Nazareth because King Herod, had he had died, and there was another king who reigned in Jerusalem. So we see here, this is the story of Christmas. This is the story of what happened when Christ was born and when Christ was giving gifts because the wise men, I mean, not the wise men, the angels did not bring gifts with them, not no tangible gifts. They were rejoicing and singing and praising God. They were giving God glory because of what was told to them, what they saw, you know, and that it was truthful and they rejoiced and they were telling everybody about it. And then we see later on that after they don't move over some time, they don't move. Evidently, Joseph was doing something they now moved into a house. He and evidently he was probably out working. Joseph was a carpenter. Yes, he was a carpenter. So he was probably out working when these uh, wise men came to mm -hmm. came came to his house and met with his wife and his son and left gifts for them. I mean, can you imagine coming home and hey, some people <laughs> just don't came to your house? And they'll shower with y'all with all kind of gifts. This is what happened. But it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't that day of. It was almost two years later. After Christ was born. He in the potty stage now. He being trained to use the bathroom. Maybe, I don't know. Because they lived a long time back then. But if, if we look at it in our age today, that's when you were doing what? Potty training your child. Teaching them how to go to the bathroom. You know, Mary could have been in the midst of cleaning up. Jesus was laying down, but I don't know. But they just said that they saw the child and his mama in the house. That's what they saw. And this is the story of our Savior, of his birth, of his parents fleeing after they received gifts. And, and, and the thing is, God orchestrated that part of the story real good. What made them bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh to see the Savior? 
God sent them. Yeah, I know. I know God sent them. And to, most likely he told them to take these gifts with them. But it was something that God knew they was going to need. Well, God provides. Yeah, that's true. He is a provider. He knew they were going to have to move around because of the situation. And they prayed. They went to the synagogue, so they prayed. And you know what? You just said something very important. God God provides. And you're absolutely he correct. He gave them the answer. He told them what to do, where to go, when to get up. They, just, It's like he provides for us. We just don't always listen and act as quickly on his word. We're trying to question it. Um, I'm not sure if that's God or not, but I think we question whether it's God or not because we're not talking to him like we should. And, and the good thing about it is that we realize God provided a savior for us. Mm -hmm. He provided somebody so that there will be no more sacrificing of sheep or, or goats or lambs or birds or none of that. He provided a sacrifice for human through his self coming mm -hmm. on this earth, being born. The ultimate sacrifice. Yes, the ultimate sacrifice. And we're celebrating, like I said, the birth of that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating the birth of that lamb today. And that is Jesus Christ. You know, we're getting ready to celebrate December the 25th. And hey, and when you wake up that Saturday morning, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, rejoice. Wow, that Christmas coming that fast? Yes, Christmas is right around the corner. Rejoice. Rejoice with your family. You know, this Christmas, pray with your family and share this story. story. Go back to Luke 2. You know, show, show, show them Matthew 2. Show them this story. Tell them the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Tell them this is why we're celebrating our Lord and Savior. This is why. This is what he came for. Because in a few months, you can tell them about his death and resurrection. We call that Easter. Resurrection Sunday. But right now, let us be joyous and let us be glad. Let us rejoice. Because now we recognize that for unto us a son is given, a child is born. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counseling. We're talking about Jesus. It's a reason to be joyous. And Jesus said that he came that we might have and enjoy life. Amen. To the full, to the overflows. Amen. See, too many of us right now, we're sad. We missing mom and we missing dad and we missing Enjoy. Enjoy. husband and wives and children. But we got a, a reason to rejoice because if they knew Jesus, Amen. then we rejoicing because we know they're not here. They're not suffering. Amen. They're not going through. Amen. And they wouldn't want you to be here sad. They want you to be rejoicing because guess what? You got to save you. You got a savior. You got another opportunity to be blessed by the most high God. And we may never know all the why, why, the, the whys, the answer to our whys. But we do know that God don't make mistakes. Amen. He's too wise he, to make one. He knows what he's doing. What he does is always for the best. I mean, I've already received um, one of my Christmas gifts already. Our youngest son came home today from college. Got here safely. Got here safe. The other one is our oldest son will be home just before Christmas. Praise the Lord. Praying that he have a safe, safe trip here. But I'm just rejoicing knowing that I'll be with my family. The four of us haven't been in the house together in a since long time. twenty since the beginning of 2020. For a day, I think, as he had to go back, our son had to go back to Virginia. But I just thank God, rejoicing knowing that, hey. We still here. The best gift that we received was when God sent his son for us and gave us the opportunity to receive him as our Lord and Savior and have all of our sins forgiven. The gift of life. You know, I used to always tell my wife, don't y'all worry about getting me nothing for Christmas. I just want y'all to be happy. Yeah, I heard that used to. That's right. Things change. <laughs> hey, they grown now. So, yeah. hey. It, 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 it's my turn to be celebrated sometime. You're not Jesus. No, I'm not. But I'm the one God used to help get him here, so, you know. I can tell you what we got you. A family photo of us. Okay. 
That's all we got for you. Don't bother me now. But hey, uh, if, if y'all have any questions, you can feel free to put them in there. It bothers you. Who's that? Let the paper go ahead. No, I'm straight. But just put it in there. Um, if, 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 if this has helped you out, just, just let us know. Like I said, we're not bashing what we do for Christmas. Understand that. You just want to tell the but story, correct? I just want you to have the story, the knowledge. the knowledge, and understanding of what the Bible says really happened. Because I remember years ago when I said this in a Bible study uh, or in church one Sunday, some people came to me afterwards because they was like, nah, Pastor, you wrong. You wrong. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, let's do a Bible study about it. And when I showed it to him, show, I went to these very same scriptures. One of these people had been in the church longer than I had been born at the time. And they don't read. But they didn't know. They ain't read. They didn't read it. Their pastor before me didn't share it. But I said, okay, let's go in the Bible. And we did this in Bible study. And I went down it just like I did tonight. And I showed it to him. I started at Luke 2, then I jumped over to Matthew 2, the same way we did tonight. And my thing is, I always want you to have the truth of the word of God. Know where the word is for yourself. So that when somebody says something, you can say, oh, hold on. No, 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 that's not what the Bible says. And then you can show it to them for yourself because you know. See, this right here. Hopefully, if 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 you had your uh, Bible with you, your hard copy Bible, you had a pen, you had a highlighter, you can highlight these scriptures, you can make notes on it, so that you'll be able to go back to it. Cause see, cause like me, I like to write in my Bible, so I write stuff at the top. So if I'm flipping through my Bible, I say, "Oh wait, wait a minute, boom!" Just like I have here for chapter three, you know, Jesus being baptized. And then the temptation that starts in chapter four. I got this written in my Bible at the top in my hand, right? So I know, okay, boom, there it is. I can go back and I can just, boom, quick reference. John, Matthew 3 talks about John the Baptist and Jesus being baptized. And then I'm going to go down there to verse, to Matthew 4, to where, hey, they're going to talk about Jesus being led up and being tempted by the devil. So I want to just thank y'all. All right, Pat Leon, I'm glad that this was an eye opener for you. Uh, like I said, it was for me too, when I first read it, because- Because we'd always heard the same story. Yeah. Like the wise men and the men. Yep. No brother. That's what's promoted. Mm-hmm. So we, we just, and like I said, I'm not knocking the yep. nativity scene. Because we have one, we have our yep. Christmas tree up. And yep. Because I didn't know it. You don't know until you find out. And then once I knew it, I make sure I'm going to teach it to other people so that they know. You know, I may try to find somebody to build me a nativity scene the correct way so I can have it on display for others to see in my window. But, and it's not, it's just something that I'm glad that we were able to share mm -hmm. with you so Amen. that you will have a correct understanding and you'll have the proper knowledge that you're armed with the knowledge. And this is not for something not something that we're we gonna go out and we're gonna boast and we're gonna beat people across the head with it. It's it just could be something that someone told the story wrong. Yeah, it they, could be. They knew it was something about a manger and the kings. You know how we tell stories, yeah. mm -hmm. and you mix it up and you forget some parts. But the word don't lie. We have to go nope. back to the word. Exactly. And it's yeah. just so that we will know the truth. Mm hmm. And so now that we know the truth, Jesus said, "You should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." You know, like I said, don't go and make people feel bad because they don't yeah. know this because that's not a Christian thing to do. You go and hey, let's say you sit amongst your family and your eye just happened to come across. You, you can say, hey, y'all, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the birth of Jesus. And you can open your Bible and you can show them the birth of Jesus. And you can tell them who saw Jesus in the manger. And you can have evidence to show them because most likely they don't know neither. And it's okay that they don't know because God sent you to be the one Amen. to tell them and show them the truth. 
And now when they know the truth, they can share it with somebody else. But we're going to do this in love. We're not doing it trying to show off because we got the knowledge. We're doing it in love. We're going to teach it in love. We're going to share it in Amen. love. Not with a chip on our shoulders, but just doing this in love. Anything you want to add, Pastor Sabrina? Nope, you said it all. All right, then. Well, hey, you know, hey, listen, I want to say thank you to all of y'all that joined us tonight. And I just want to just give all y'all flowers right now. <laughs> I'm serious because let me tell you, I'm, I'm still riding high off of prayer and like people's testimony Amen. to me that I heard that my Tell wife heard, you know, and, and it's just really is doing me some good and it's encouraging me. Even my wife, you know, she told me after the phone call I had and stuff like that, she just really encouraged me too, telling me, you know, you are a good pastor, the things that you do, how you care about people, uh, you know, how you're teaching and you're praying. And, and that just did something to me too. Because she is, she's my biggest supporter. She's my biggest encourager. And she tells me all the time, and I don't take it lightly. And just to have that opportunity to talk with some of you all. Uh, matter of fact, the last couple of weeks, um, you know, people have called. And, and I just want to say thank you. Because as a pastor, that is important. Mm -hmm. That you hear words to encourage you because. It makes you keep going. Exactly. And y'all don't know what pastors go through. Pastors get discouraged. Some of us get discouraged more easily than others mm -hmm. because we're out here and we're doing all this stuff. And a lot of times we don't see the, the returns. Yes, that we believe we should have. But I know that I am seeing. <laughs> thank you, Jakia. I am seeing the fruits of the labor. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know this is because as I read the comments, as I look at y'all and I've talked to some of y'all, the text messages, it the does growth, my heart. The growth that you um, experience when you're talking to people in person or on the phone or you get um, text messages or letters from them or phone calls, it, you can hear the growth um, in the people from the word of God when you when you how they handle situations. And, you know, and that's important, too, the growth. Listen, you got struggles, but you're still growing. Amen. You came into the church with issues. Amen. All those issues are not going away just like that. It's going to take some time. And as Pastor Angela uh, preached on Sunday, you have weak moments. Sometimes every day may not be a great day. It may not be what you expect that day to be. So you may be weak, but you're still anointed. Yes. You may have weak days, weak moments, weak times, but you are still anointed to do what God called you to do. You still can get it done. Just remember, you're a crushed red pepper. <laughs> that fire is still in you. You know what? If he take another seasoning, I have I'm none of your, No, that's it's going to be a problem. No, those, those are mine. <laughs> the complete is mine, the mustard seed is mine. She don't even keep cooked with mustard seed. That's something I had from a sermon I did over 10 years ago. But I still have my container. So I'm going to go buy me one with crushed red pepper so I can have it on the prayer line too. My you crushed red pepper to remind packs. us. You got some packs of crushed mm -mm. red pepper. Yeah, that's true. But see, you'll be to open the little packs that I got from Domino's and put them on stuff. But listen, understand that. And I appreciate your growth. I appreciate world. your words. I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your financial support. But I just want to let you know that I am grateful to God for you. I love you. And I thank God. And keep doing what you're doing. And be ready. In be, season. Be ready. And out of season. Because God is going to use you. Tanya Moore, that's for you. Be ready. Tanya Moore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, with My that, sister's going to get me. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell everybody to be ready because we are preparing all of you all to do the work of the ministry, which is not just watching us, but it's being productive out there on the battlefield. Put your hands to work. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we just want to thank you 
and praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jaquiel. See there? Jaquiel going to bring me a crushed red pepper. Love her. <laughs> so, hey, so with that being said, I just want to say thank God for this rain that I'm hearing. It's storming out there. And hey, but it's just like his word. Hey, it's going to accomplish what he said it's going to do. <laughs> so, y'all, let's have a good night. On the behalf of myself, you Pastor know, James Tiger. Oh, yeah. We'll get a close out I'm in sorry. Prayer. Close us out in prayer. <laughs> I forgot. Please forgive me, y'all. Oh, lift your holy hands with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the lesson about the birth of Jesus that went forth tonight, God. We ask, oh God, that you give us a thirst and a hunger to continue reading your word, God, to know truth and to use that truth yes, to be a blessing yes. to other people, to build them up and to edify them. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We adore you, oh God, and we thank you, God, for this pastor, Pastor James. We thank you, God, for the work that you're doing within him, God, and we thank you for the love that he has for your people. Yes. Lord, we ask that you to bless every ear, every person that hear this word live and who will hear it by replay god let them go this week and prosper and have good success in jesus name amen 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 so on the behalf of myself pastor james tiger wilson my beautiful wife pastor sabrina pastor Angela, who's not here but she is on, on uh she's watching our family team wilkinson team dixon and of course you our Peniel Covenant Christian Center family and our Peniel Covenant Christian Center Facebook Live family. Know that we love you. God bless you. And I'll see you in the morning at 7 a.m. and bring somebody else with you. Auntie Geraldine, peace. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>